So it's pretty clear. Tesla is a robot on wheels. I've had a Tesla Model X for five years. I've had FSD beta and everything else. Uh, it never ceases to blow, blow me away. And I don't have 12.2 yet, 12.1. Uh, so do you agree Tesla is already, as Elon says, it's an AI robotics company and the car is a robot? 100%. Okay, we got that out of the way. Now, let's talk about one of the bombshells from last night. I do have some notes I'll pop up just to make sure. And these are the things, I just rough dictation of what he said. But basically, and, and I've modeled this. I've got CERN Basher on the channel next week to do more bot modeling. He's done a lot of work in this area. I did this mm -hmm. with Herbert. But bot per Elon has the potential to far exceed anything else that Tesla can do combined. In addition, the biggest thing to ever hit the world. Do you agree with that statement last night? Because that, that took me aback. Well, I, I, I knew that, but it was nice to hear it from his voice. Yes, I mean, he has made comments to that effect before. And I do, it, the exponentiality of human robots, I mean, just artificial intelligence robotics in general is going to drastically change the face of the earth, the face of culture, the face of society. Um, but the humanoid robot specifically is going to have an incredibly large impact because its aim is to do work that humans do currently. And that is both exciting and disruptive and scary all at the same time. But because basically we have built the entire world and an incredible number of tools to interface with our human bodies in our human minds, that if we can replicate that with a mechanical body and an AI brain, that then those things really have the potential to do almost all of the work that humans do currently. And so it's that general interface, instead of being something that's a highly specific piece of technology that works in one use case, it is something that really is applicable across all industries, all types of work. And that is the, the key that makes this different. And so, I mean, it's hard to think of someone who would not appreciate just just think about all the people who thought man you know what i need i need a clone of myself well anyone who's ever had the thought of i wish there was another me to share all this work with can appreciate the fact that you would also like to have a robot that you could delegate tasks to in the same way as long as it could do those tasks to the standard that you would like it to be done to and so that's where this number billions of robots comes from is that there's billions of people and eventually i think that there will be you know numerous robots for every single person on the planet um, and so you you get into numbers of billions of billions that is really kind of nutty now, i don't have any idea how long that future is from now but the humanoid robot project as a whole that there's going to be a whole number of companies pursuing is going to be basically the tip of the spear for that acceleration of robotics because it is such a general interface. I did some modeling from a guy called Chris Camago, and I had assumed the bot wouldn't start shipping until the year 2027, 2028. I just updated it on the fly here, and you and I are going to model this in a week or two, hopefully, well, and the dust settles down. But this is assuming they start to ship in 2026, even though... Can you define says, ship for me? Are you talking about ship to internal Tesla use cases or external? What does that mean for you? Well, that's the question. I got the impression he meant ship to customers. So let's go back to these notes. So let's, let's go through this first. Uh, first of all, one of the things that I see is what Elon's very good at doing, is anticipating the future. And it's very clear, if you look at countries like Japan, they're going to be missing 40 million workers by the year 2040. China have the same problem. They don't have enough people to do jobs. So Chinese are going whole hog into building humanoid robots because they need to. 
the population is not making babies, it's a massive problem. And Elon's also spoken about that a lot. So he sees this, and he also has great respect for the Chinese and their manufacturing. He said, I think yesterday, that if the Chinese automakers were unleashed in the US, every American car country would be destroyed overnight, if there were no tariffs, etc. So putting that aside, bots are coming, and that's become a very urgent issue. That's why he was in the lab in Palo Alto late last night or the night before. I think it was the night before now. Um, but he wants to make it, the bots safe. He did say he would be delivering or shipping a good number or some number of Optimus in 2025. And I was like, whoa, I wasn't expecting this till 2027. I don't know what that means. Does it mean displacing the ones that BMW are trying to get from the other maker? I don't know. Um, also, he wants to make it very safe and he wants them to do very basic generalized tasks and they will use that same inference that we started talking about today. So this for me was an absolute bombshell and I was blown away. It took my expectations two years to the present mm -hmm. from the future and I'd like to get your take on all of this. Do you believe they are putting everything they can into this? And also, one of the things he did stress was there was no company like Tesla when it comes to being very effective and efficient with resources, not just inference. So over to you. What do you think of all of this? Yeah, I definitely agree that Tesla is in the prime position to create this bot that they have all the pieces and they have so many use cases for it internally that they can do a lot of this development work and get this bot just way down the line of being incredibly useful for you know dangerous dull or repetitive work of tesla's factories so i'm interpreting when he said we plan to ship some number of and I, he's talking about volume that is some significant number of volume at the end of 2025. I can't help but notice that's also the expected timeline for when the Gen 3 vehicle is supposed to begin ramping up. And so I'm thinking that that is internal deliveries to Tesla factories and getting it, actually using it as an integral part of the next generation vehicle platform manufacturing process. So I think that's the goal is they want, you know, maybe they'll start with some low number, 5% or 10% of the overall stations that normally would be manned by a human, they would like to be manned. That's my, that's my read on this situation. We'll see if that comes true. I don't think that Tesla is going to need to sell these to external customers. And I, I honestly don't expect them to sell them to e external customers um, until, yeah, maybe closer to what you're thinking, 2027, 2028. Like they will go through a lot of internal development. They will end up saving a lot of money. This will actually flow through to the bottom line for them far in advance of when they actually deliver the first ones to come unless there is a specific relationship that Elon has with somebody who is able to convince him personally to allow them to kind of get in on the development process of Optimus and to be able to use those internally. But I think that's what it would take. And, you know, there are a number of business people that he has a, a close relationship with that um, might be able to convince him of something like that. And we certainly know based on the, conversation that Brett Adcock was having with Herbert the other day that they have been approached by, he talked about having conversations with 50 of the Fortune 100 CEOs, um, that there's the labor shortage is off the charts. And every major company has an incredible felt need to do whatever they can to just boost their labor content as much as possible or not their labor content but to boost their workforce as much as possible and so there's going to be lots of people approaching anyone like figure already has people approaching them the other all of the other robot companies are going to have lots and lots of partners that are approaching them and so there's not going to be any lack of incoming to tesla for people trying to get access to this technology
Yeah, you, you hit on so many different Pandora's boxes right there. One of them is very interesting is the, the confluence of timelines. Model 2, unbox process, robot, all at the same time. I didn't put that together in my head until you mentioned it. Tell us more about well, that. Well, it's something that Tom Zhu mentioned explicitly in the shareholder day last year that um you know they were talking or maybe it wasn't tom Zhu, maybe it was lars um but as they were talking about the unbox process and how you get more people the ratio of people to the sub assembly that were being worked on you could get a higher number of people um to that he said or optimus robots and that was the the seed that tells you that this is exactly what they're thinking about and they've been thinking about it as a part of the unbox manufacturing process since the time that they initially conceptualized this revolution in manufacturing technology. Because when I, as you know, I walked the Cybertruck line for quite nearly two hours and we made a summary video of that. But that whole line is completely automated. There's no place for a worker there. It's just monitored by engineers upstairs using cameras. So you're talking about the sub-assembly. Would that be building the steering stuff before it gets taken by a robot and installed in the car? Or what exactly would the role be for these robots? Um, you know, that's going to be an interest. A lot of things that are flexible are, are hard to automate. And so things like wiring or, um, you know, filling up hydraulics or there, there are a number of issues that, that could arise. You know, something like welding is not going to be, obviously casting is going to be all done in an automated fashion. But you can almost think of, you know, there there are things that might be easier to do with a human form factor if you're not paying a human to do that. You know, if the, the cost of labor, I mean, this is, everyone thinks about how much money a bot could make be, based on how much we pay people in these jobs currently. But the thing is that manufacturing of bots will be so scalable that what will end up happening in reality is that what we pay to have that labor done will be dramatically reduced. So there's going to be incredible deflationary pressure throughout the supply chain. And the costs of the goods and services that we all consume are going to just be eviscerated. And so, you know, someone who makes fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, or forty thousand dollars a year, even thirty thousand dollars a year will suddenly have access to the type of lifestyle that someone who makes 150,000 has access to today because the prices of all those things are going to be, you know, just dramatically reduced. 